Hello there, 585ers. We're going to kind of pull, finish up with talking about sheets tonight. Um, and that should get us finished with the sort of G Suite kind of orientation. I then want to take a big step back and look at the assignment uh, so that I can help you uh, see the bigger picture here. I think sometimes we kind of get lost in the weeds when we look at all this uh, technology stuff. So what I'm going to do is let's look right here where it says what we're doing is we're going to create a virtual classroom through the use of Google Classroom it becomes your exploration of the issues surrounding the use of technology integrated into education. This is straight out of what we have read in Dr. Fullen's book. This is all about the ubiquitous classroom. Here's what we're doing. We're going to complete the mini training modules. That's me yakking at you and explore various aspects of the Google Classroom, Drive Suite, and Calendar Hangouts, YouTube, and Sites. What I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to hold your hand and I'm going to build a Google Classroom that has in it one unit, aka topic with content that looks like a doc, slides, sheets, um, and a form. Form can be quiz, it can be, you know, informational survey, however you want to look at it. And I'm going to do that. I'm literally going to walk through it as if we were sitting here and I was training you to take the uh, Google Teacher certification. Next week, we will then, oh, we'll look at calendar as well tonight. Next week, we will then go into the Hangouts, YouTube, and Sites, although I'll probably do that in the reverse order. I'll do Sites, Hangouts, and YouTube. Um, hangouts and YouTube, YouTube is pretty much, we all get YouTube. The only thing you need to understand about YouTube is if you want to have your own channel um, and if you want to get it organized. So that would mean playlists favorites, things like that. Uh, Hangouts is exactly, um, Hangouts is a text or video chat, so it's basically Skype, it's basically FaceTime, um, you know, iMessage, Messenger, pick your app, that's what it is. Now, Sites is totally different. What Sites is, is it is a web page creation product that Google has out there. Um, and why would I use it? And that's what I'll show you next week is because I think, well, the main reason why you would use it is because you can integrate it with your Google Classroom here in Sydney. All righty. So let me kind of, let's take a step back. Here is the Google Classroom that I created last week. And when you land on it, you have the ability to change this part up here where it says my Google Classroom, which is the title I gave it, which if I want to retitle it, I just come over here and click on this link and I can retitle it, whatever I want to call it. Um, this is the stream. This is where what people see when they come into your classroom. When you look up here at stream, this is where people are going to be looking to see the flow of your classroom. Classwork is where you do the heavy lifting. This is where you actually do the creation part. Although, and we talked about this last week, I am of the opinion, and I think most folks who train on this R2, is that this is where you do the actual creation. This is the Google Drive. And as you can see, the two are linked. So I have a Google Drive. But inside my Google Drive now, there is a folder called My Google Classroom that represents my classroom, what I've created. And I can work within that to put new folders in there and get a shareable. I can do everything in here that then when I'm ready to use it, 
I can put it over here. I have the ability to create a Google. I have I have a Google Calendar that is connected to my Google Classroom. We'll look at that a little bit tonight. The problems I have in showing you things is well, let me let me keep walking through this, and I'll show you what I mean. When you go to people. This is how you put people into your Google Classroom. Now, what I'd like you to do, please, is to go up here and where it says teachers and put me in to your Google Classroom. To do that, you're going to put in SBSwan02 at L-O-U-I-S-V-I-L-L-E dot E-D-U. Now, if you have a Google Classroom through your school district here in the state of Kentucky, you may or may not be able to do this. And probably, I know you can't do this because I am not a member of your domain. I'm going to cancel that because obviously I'm in my own. What we'll have to do is if you want to demonstrate your understanding of this particular module using your own Google Classroom in your school. What we'll need to do is to set up a, a time when we can meet virtually in this space. And I'll let you take over the screen uh, in the Collaborate Ultra. And then you can show me what you've done with the Google Classroom. You are not doing anything big here. Okay. I want to emphasize this. This is not the class. That would be 587 teaching learning online where you actually do create something that you could use with kids. This is pretty much you just demonstrating your understanding of structure, how things fit, how things work within it. Uh, and then of course this final one over here is grades. That's what kids see. Now also let me help you understand something. When kids come in here, they will see a Google Classroom structure that at this level looks very similar. But once they get over to here, and once they get over to here, it looks like stuff that has been created for them. This is how you can do differentiation. So you can create different kinds of assignments that then would be assigned to people differently. So if you have children in your classroom who struggle with reading, you can create an assignment that has vocabulary that's easy for them to understand. Um, this is how you do collaboration. We talked about that last week. This is so easy to do with collaboration. So if we have an assignment that we're creating where we want kids to collaborate, and that's one of the things we're going to play with tonight is how to do that, then it's very easy then to set all this up from the get-go and have it waiting there for them. Let me, let me walk that a little bit further. So if the setup is we're studying the nine planets as a part of our science class, then what I can do is the classroom teacher is I can create a little slides template. And then within that template, I can have a blank slide that basically is where blank slides, where the kids are going to, if we're doing the planets, they're going to identify the name of their planet. They're going to identify its atmosphere, its, its gravitational pull, its size, its mass, distance from the sun, distance from the earth. You see where I'm going. So I could have these empty slides, and then I could have in my classroom, I have nine planets. I have... 27 kids, so three kids would work on each of the planets, and so therefore I could create this kind of template and have it named Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, so on, so on, and then I could send it out to the three kids who are going to own the Mercury one. I could send it out to the three kids who own the Venus one, or I could just send it all out to every kid, and the slides wouldn't be identifiable at any stage any stretch, they would have to do the identification. They would have to say, this is our work on uh, whatever planet I have assigned them.
but then we would also want to make sure that they would understand how they can share the assignment with each other. And then, as I said, when they come in, they'll see things like grades. All right, let's go and look at drive real fast, because as I said, this is where things really ought to start. And the reason for that is very simple is because when you start here, then you have everything waiting for you so that when you get over to here, it's just a matter of, let me close the calendar. It's just a matter of then pulling it all together. Now I got like 14 million drives opened here. So I'm going to go ahead and close this so that we get to where we want to be. So last week we kind of started here and we put things into uh, our drive that we could use. And where I kind of left off last week is we were looking at spreadsheets, which the Google calls sheets. So what I want to do is basically just give you, and I'll tell you how I frame all this. I'm framing this through the lens of, hello. I hope I haven't lost you. It looked like everything just did a blink and did a reset. That was odd. Uh, I am framing all this through the lens of looking at it as if you were going to take the Google teacher certification test. And so when I show you things, excuse me while I fix my screen. When I show you things, that's how I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it in terms of what would you see on the test. This is really interesting. It basically thinks that it has become a part of the projector, even though the projector is not on. Okay, well, let's just drop down here and change that. All right, now we're back. Sorry about that, folks. This is on the test. So what the test does is it gives you some uh, names, in other words, students, that you put into your Google Classroom. The test is made up of 20 multiple choice questions, and then it has the, the scenarios that are the practical side of it. The 20 questions are randomly assigned. Um, they're everything from silly questions if you ask me about the name for that right there which is called the um, omnibox <laughs> we call it the search bar but and then the little um, what I would call the waffle is called the um, application array you know but then you get to the practical side. Those are scenarios where they ask you to like put some kids' names in uh, to a fake classroom that you create uh, through a fake website <clears throat> that they send you. And then they ask you to do various things. So this is the spreadsheet side of it. So what they do is they give you these names and then they ask you to put in some data. Then what they're gonna ask you to do is they're going to ask you to average for each kid what their average um, test score was. Doing that is extremely simple. You come over here and this is where your test score average is going to end up. And you come up here under format. I'm sorry. You come up here under data and you can then sort this if you want to. You don't have to. But that's where you can sort things. Then when you want to actually work with it, what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to insert a function. Now, functions are the way that spreadsheets work with data. So we can go here and we can look at a function. And at first it gets a little intimidating don't let it intimidate you it's very easy up here is where most functions that are being used reside so we want to know what this kid's average is so we're going to click on the average function 
And as you can see, it already puts us in, and then it's waiting for us then to just highlight the data that we need to highlight, and then we hit return and bang. So I come to the cell where I want it to go first, and I hit insert. I come down the function. I'm going to hit average. I'm going to highlight the data. And goodness gracious, look how far out that went. I'm going to come down. I'm going to highlight the cell. I'm going to put in the function. And I'm going to put in average again. And this time I'm going to highlight the data. Excuse me. Highlight the data. Hit return. Go down to the next row, sort of function, average, highlight data, put it in. Last row, go down to where I'm going to put it in, highlight the data. Not yet, I got to put it in first. <laughs> Come on, hang on here, guys, average, and highlight the data and hit return. Okay. Now, you'll notice that we've got these incredibly long <laughs> um, where it's, it's gone out to like 14 bazillion different. So we can go in and we can change up the, the look of our data. We can actually just right click on it. And you can go in, you can change how the data looks if you want to do that. Okay. But let's get to the part where what do we do with this data? So if I come over here and highlight everything, and then I go back to my insert again, now I can get a chart. And once I do that, it shows me how everybody has done on the test. And it gives me a nice little bar graph here, which, by the way, is easy enough to change. You can go over here and you can decide if you don't want it to look like that. If you want it to look like a pie chart, I don't know why you would. I guess maybe you could see how everybody compares to each other. That's what pies do. Um, but for right now, let's just leave it here. So you have the ability to do this. As simple as that. Now, you can sort your data. That's under here. I can sort my columns. It will then sort it A, B, C. And as you can see over here, since everybody's name was Smith, it sorted them by the first letter of their first names. But nothing gets lost. It all... And then you have under here, you have the same kind of things where you can create, you could create a form based upon this. Um, and then add-ons is where you have the ability to have those tools. We talked about that last week. But here's the thing. <clears throat> so on the test, what it basically says is it gives you this data. It asks you to create the chart, et cetera, et cetera. And then it asks you to share the data with a certain someone okay and what you would do is you would enter the email of that person that you're going to share this data with so I'm going to go ahead and put mine in here and notice up here that I can make sure that the only thing this person can do with this data is view the link now on the test what it does is it ask you to do this and it gives you a fictional principle that you send it to um, and then you basically send now sheets work and that is the beauty of it now the thing that makes it so interesting is that when you look at a form here's our form that we created last week one of the nice things about the forms are when you go to look at the responses, so there's our questions, you know, nothing earth shattering here. We did get a response because I actually did it, 
But this is what I want you to see. You can view the responses in a spreadsheet. Now, when you do this, and it's a quiz, what you can do now, you can do exactly what we just did, is you can go in and you can start manipulating the data any way that you want to do it. And the responses will show names and questions, and they got it right, they got it wrong, and so on and so on. And you can go across the line here, and you can do an average. You can do a sum. All a sum does is just add up things. Oh, it does. So you can do all of that from the form that you have created. All righty. Drop back into my classroom. By the way, for those of you who will be sharing with me your classroom uh, who are not inside a Google domain, what you'll be doing is you'll be giving me this right here. This is the class code that you have. Or the other way you can do it, as I said, is you can go into the people and you can put me in as an invitee to your Google Classroom. If you are not in a Google, if you are in a Google domain, then we're going to have to get together and figure out how to get together so you can show it to me through the Collaborate Ultra. Let's build something. So if we think about what we're trying to do here, let's think about creating structure. So at this point, these are the structures I can build. I can build an assignment. I can build a quiz assignment. Can I have a quiz inside an assignment that's not a quiz assignment? Yes. <laughs> I can put in question. That would be sort of the general kind of prompt. I can put in material, and we're going to do that in just a second here, because this is what makes the, what you do in your Google Drive really shine. Uh, we can use an older post. In other words, it's something we've created in the past. If we want to bring it back, we can. Then we get to topics. So let's click here. And let's go ahead and call this Unit 1 Planets, because that's the stuff I have kind of created over here. And I'm going to add that. Now, as you can see, it's sitting out here. And this is where, this is my navigation. If I come back here to the stream, it will start showing up over here as well, as soon as I put something in it. So I'm going to go back here to Unit 1, Planets. Now, what can I do with this is I can open it up, and I can start adding things to it. And what do I want to add to it? Well, let's go look and see. Over here, I have all this stuff that I have created in my drive. When I look at it here, and I look at it through classwork, and what can I put in here? I might start with something like material. Think of material as a subfolder that holds the stuff you're going to use for your unit study. So I'm going to go to material and I'm going to add. And there's my Google Drive. So when I go over here to the stuff that I have in my Google Drive, I can just go and say, I want to add, hold down the control key. I want to add this, 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 and this. And I'm going to add that. And there we are. Stuff or us to use in our learning about the planets.
and I'm now going to post that. Now, when I posted it, it comes up here. But I can easily enough, easily enough, drag it and put it into there. Let's do that again so you can see it. If I wanted to, I could have created this from the get-go, in other words, whoops, from the get-go, when I would go and, and actually create something, and I can then over here put it into a topic that I've created. That's why I'm a big believer in creating the topics before you ever start doing anything. Or I could create it and then literally drag it into the topic, the unit. That's simple. Now, inside of here, what can I put in here? Well, I can put in anything my little heart desires. Uh, I could put in whatever I need to put in. So if I wanted to put in a YouTube video, and we kind of looked at this last week, and I think the thing was called Planet Song. If I remember. Let's see what we get. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and... I have no idea what that is, but I can listen to it and see. I need to fix my spelling and then I save okay there's your assignment now I can't go too much farther with talking about well let, let me go in and let's look let's let's go in and look at our little Google Slides thing that we kind of started. So here I found this uh, on Teachers Pay Teachers, by the way. If you have not looked at Teachers Pay Teachers, you need to look at Teachers Pay Teachers. Don't go out there and buy anything on it unless it's really something you think you could use. But it is so full of all kinds of great stuff. So what we could do is back in classroom one of the things that I can do now is I can go and now create that assignment Use the resources in the planets material to create a four slide presentation about what it would be like. To live on a different planet. And I could leave it like this. I could go in and I could go right back to my source material again. 
and I could have sitting in here a template all set and ready to go. I'm going to say that this is the template. I'm going to add it. Over here, I will assign it to a topic. In other words, that's where it's going to be. And I'm going to say it's for all students. Now, if I had people in my classroom, this is where I would see everybody, and I could put little check marks next to the names of the people who I want to get this assignment. I might send a different assignment built a different way for people for whatever reason. Or I might do that uh, distributing out the learning. It's called distributive learning. And I could have nine planets, 27 kids, three to each planet. So I could sit here and I could go, okay, I'm going to identify this. I want you three to do Mercury, you three to do this, you three to do that. And I could then pick them right here and send it out to everybody. Due date. I don't have a due date, but I'm going to put a due date in here. I'm going to have this ready to go by the 28th. I won't put a time. And I've told it I want to do it here inside of the topic called planets. And there it is. So here's the assignment. Here's the due date. Here's the stuff for us to use in our learning. And this is our resource material. If I click here, it'll actually let me see everything that's in here. And it's available to me. I click on it. It opens up. I can take a look at it. Pretty cool, huh? So as you can see, when I'm seeing it in my stream, now things are starting to show up. If I want to keep my materials area front and center, I can come over here and I can do that and I can move it to the top. So that my materials area is always at the top. In other words, if I'm going to keep using this all through what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to put it right there so that it is readily available to everybody. There's our stream. There's our classwork. This is where we go to look at things. This is where we go to create things. And this is where we see what we're doing. I could put something here. And this would be an announcement that would go out to everybody in the class. But notice, right away, see, I could start putting things in here that will pique their interest. So I could go right back in here and I could put in my planet song. I want to go find that again. So we're going to add that into the announcement. And I'm going to, I could schedule this announcement. I could save it as a draft. But I want to go ahead and have it pop right away. And there we go. Now you notice down here where it has my face and then it says add class comment. This is where I can go in and add more. Or a student could give me a content, uh, give me a comment back if I've invited it. They can give you comment back anyway. But if I invite them to, they can put in a comment here that they would come back to me about. Um, in other words, up here, if I'd said, let me know if you have a choice or a preference on what planet you would like to study. Classroom, 
I'm back over here in my drive. This is where things start. This is where I want to always have the ability to come back because this becomes a, a place where I can go in and see what it is that, um, that I've got here. And when you, when you see this, one of the things that makes it really kind of cool is if you put all this stuff, if you need to add things, you can move things around on the screen. So if you've got stuff down here that you can also use in the next topic that you create, you can either leave it sitting here like this, or you can drop it into the planets. In other words, if I come up here and I drop this, it's now inside that unit called planets. So I've got a material thing sitting here. If it's a material that I'm going to use for everything that we do, then I can pull it back out and it can always reside outside of all of this. In other words, I could put it over here and it then becomes a part of outside of everything. See? And I've got it here at the top. Now, the only thing that I don't like is I can't do subtopics or sub material inside of here. In other words, what's in here is what's in here. I can't do anything uh, to drill down further so I could have one material folder and then inside of that would be material for unit one, unit for material, material for unit two, material for unit three. So you're always going to have to um, give it a label so that people know that this is stuff to use in our learning about the planet. So in other words, kids will have to realize that's what it is. Let's look at calendar. So calendar is pretty straightforward. Calendar is where you can create things uh, to remind people. So if we're going to have a test uh, on, well, no, let's go in and, and do that. Let's go over and take a look at where I did No, I don't want to see the 21st. Thank you very much. So I can go over and I can see on the 28th. There we go. So there's my assignment that I made. And now it's showing up in the calendar. It's showing up in everybody's calendar. Okay. What else can I do? I can do all kinds of things. I did that too fast. Let me show you again. If I click here, I can add a title, but look below. It can be an event, it can be a reminder, or it can be a task. So the event is exactly like what we've created up here where it says the assignment is due on the 28th. I could do, let's see, presentations or class. Now, is that a reminder, an event, or a task? I'll call it an event. And I can add a description if I want to. And notice down here, I have the ability to decide where I want this to go. Whom do I want it to go to? If I leave it at me, then it just shows up on my calendar. Or I could send it out to other calendars in the room. See? So I can do that. I'm, it's hard for me to show you because I don't have any calendars. <laughs> I mean, I don't have anybody in my class. But that's it would show up and it would be available. Um, I, could, I could be very precise about who gets the calendar. So once again... I come over here to my plus, I can decide if it's a title, I can decide if it's an event, a reminder, a task. The task is exactly what it sounds like, get something done. 
Um, the reminder is exactly what it sounds like. Reminder to check for student work, so on and so on. Down here are all the calendars that I have access to in your classroom. And I can show you that. See all these that have a name associated with them? These are people's calendars when they created their uh, Google Classrooms that they shared with me. And so as you can see, I can give her a color. I don't have to show it if I don't want to. I could just say display this one only. You know, I can do all that kind of stuff. All right. Oh, right. The over here, this is where I can change how I see it. So here's the week view. Here's the monthly view. Here's the schedule view. In other words, what, are, what things are going to happen. Um, here's the year view. You can see it all. Here's just the four days out. Calendar. This is probably one of the best things as a teacher that you can have because it gives you a chance to um, make sure that your work you've done here shows up over here. In other words, the assignment that you gave shows up over here. So if I go in here or I can look over there, either place. And if I look at the week and it's, it's asking me to, it, to let it uh, have connections to other things. I'm not going to deal with that right now, but you see I, I, my assignment is down here. This is how kids would see it as well. They would see it. They would have their own calendar. They don't see your calendar. They see their calendar but they see the assignments that you have added to their calendars. So, you know, there's, there's no more excuse for, I didn't know we were going to do that. It's in your calendar. And you, you have to remind them to go look here. Okay. We saw how, again, if we start here with our organization, then it becomes a much easier way to then manipulate it throughout um, our classroom, using our classroom. And as you can see here, I can create a new folder. And I might call this new folder Unit 2, Sun, or Sun and Stars. How about we do that? Sun and Stars. So I have in here the ability to move things into different places. And the way you can do that is if you've created something out here, and if you do a right click and you say move to my drive. It shows you everything that's in your drive, all your folder structures, everything that you have created are all right here. So you can decide. It's taking a while to load everything. You can decide then where you want to move it to. So it's not like you just have to leave everything just sitting out here, um, you know, And it is telling me it's already in there. So I can't move it, which is fine.
So what do you want? What do I want you to do? Let's go back. I would like you to create a Google Classroom. I would like you to personalize it so that when I come into it, it actually has something up here. And that's as easy as select the theme. You don't have to go crazy here. You can use the themes that the Google has available to you. Um, if you do want to put your own photo, in other words, you want to put something up there that belongs to you, one of the things you can do is you can just go and find it and upload it. Here's the trick. It must be 800 by 200 or it does this. And I'll show you. So if we were to go and get, let's, let's put me in. You see what it says? It says it's too small. It must be at least 800 by 200. So you have to, that's the first thing you have to do. Now, is it hard to do that? Not really. Uh, on a PC, you basically just download it, you open it up, you go into size, and you can resize it to 800 by 200, and bam, it shows up. That's what I did with the one that you saw there. Let me go ahead and do that, just as an aside, just so you can see it. So if I go in to where my documents and all that live on this machine, I can find where my, my picture is. And then I can bring it up and I can play with it using the tools that are on board um, my computer. So if I come here and I do a double on him and it doesn't let me get to it, I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of that. And I'm going to make sure that everything is okay up here, that I haven't accidentally closed anything out. I'll go ahead and start closing some of this out because we have so much stuff. And I'm going to move this out of the way so I can get to where my stuff lives. I'm going to open up the file explorer and I'm going to go to downloads. And so here I am. I'm right there. And you see, it allows me to play. I can choose which one I want to use. I think I'll try photos. I think that's the one that I can use. And so I can come in here. And if I go here, I can resize my photo. Okay. I can define it with my own custom dimensions. So I'm going to tell it that I want it to be 800 by... 200. Okay. I got to take that out. Sorry. You don't want to, it's trying to force you to use an aspect ratio. You'll see why in just a second here. And I'll say save. And I'll save it again. It'll tell me it's going to overwrite it. That's okay. Now I'll close that. Now if I go back in to my Google Classroom, and I want to upload a photo. And I go get the photo. I hope you're seeing this. And I open it. What it's going to do is I'm going to be a very wide Steve. <laughs> so be careful when you play with it. Uh, some photos, let me show you, that might fit in other words snoopy here he is i think the right width what it forces you to do is you have to then pick what part of the photo you want to use and so you end up with sort of snoopy rising above your class and looking at everything i'm after you've done that i'm going to ask that you create at least one topic call it whatever you want you can call it my learning unit you can call it um, fractions you can call it whatever you want and then what I'm going to ask you to do 
is to put stuff into that topic. Okay. And the easiest way to do that is you go and you hit either create here. And you can put a materials folder in here. You can put an assignment in here. Notice you've got the ability down here to do an add. And I hope you're seeing this now. If I've already created over here, or if I've just got material over here, I'm not asking you to create a lot here, guys. You know, I think when we first started, we had a simple little uh, Google Doc that we created that says, hi, we're going to learn all about the planets. And we put that in. And then we can put in a little slideshow that we found. And then we can put in a little YouTube video that we found. But we found, find it all over here very simply in our drive. And it's easy to, to put it in. Now, for me to go out and find something that's a YouTube, I'm not going to put that in my, my drive. I'm just going to put it. It's going to go search for it because I know this is the one I want to use. And I'm going to put it in there. Notice from the assignment pane, I can go ahead and start creating things. Ta -da. So I have the ability from inside the assignment pane to create something. I can come up here and I can do an insert and I can put in anything I want to at this point. It's very simple. I can go explore and I'm going to put in M E R C U R Y. I'm going to ask it to find for me, whoops, Mercury. And I can either read this, look for some ideas that I might want to use with it, or I might go to image, search the web, do the same thing, find a good picture. And I can put it in. Let's try that picture. I like that one better. Let's learn about Mercury. All changes have been saved in Drive. I can show this document online if I wanted to. But here's the real trick. I go back in here. And I were to go in and share it. And I'm just going to share it. Where do you think it's going to end up? There you go. It's waiting for you right there. This is, this is probably the thing that drives people the craziest is because it's so easy to do this kind of stuff. Um, but yet you just have to get into a groove with it. You have to understand how it's going to work. All right.
So that is my best way of showing you how we are, what you are expected to do with this. Now, next week, we'll take it another step um, and we'll, we'll take a look at YouTube, <laughs> which is always interesting to do. Um, we'll take a look at YouTube on how to organize it so that it makes it easier for you to have access to things that, um, you know, relate to what you're trying to teach. And then the last thing that we'll play with is something called, and let me get to it where I can show it to you. We're going to look at something called sites. And why would we use sites? The thing about sites that makes it so fascinating is you have the ability to put things into your site that look very much like what you can have in your Google Classroom. But at the same time, you also have the ability to put into sites things that kids can see in a much more, as you can see here, I've got a picture and I've got a video. So, well, what's the difference, Steve? I can do that over here. Yes, that is. But with sites, what I can do is, is I can allow kids to create a web page to put their information on that we can share. I could use the sites as a way for parents to see what's going on in my class. But more importantly, and the thing that I will show you is that I can have kids do things that are interactive that I really can't do on my classroom page. And so the assignment would look something like go to our sites page, click the link here, because that's how you do this. You'll, you'll use links to put over into your classroom. Um, go to the FET site that I have there on that page and use the simulator to look at how we can do area. And then the assignment would be to come back and after you've learned how to do that in the FET assignment, could you then figure out the area of the object located below? And then we'll have an object that we created in a draw document. And the kids would use the FET to figure out how to do that. Kind of cool. So that'll be next week. And we will have then finished up the three part assignment on the Google Classroom. I hope I've made it clear that this is pretty much what you're trying to do here. Is you're creating a Google Classroom, you're going to personalize it, you're going to create a topic that then becomes your way of organizing the material that you're going to create. You do not have to go into great detail with those creations. Uh, as I said, just having uh, a Google Doc, a slide, maybe a form. No, let's do a form because they're easy. I showed you how to do it. And then the thing that would be really interesting would be how you just how you're going to organize it. Does it exist in a material folder? Or does it exist in at the top level of a um, an assignment? So here's our material folder that we created. And we also created a topic called the planets right here, unit one planets. Or, and then here's your assignment that we did. Okay, so you're going to have embedded in an assignments, you can have use of a slides that you've created a template for them to use in your materials folder might be stuff that they can use feel free to 
take stuff off the web, put it in here. You don't have to create things on your own. Uh, I always, you know, live by the rule of if I find something that I'm allowed to use and it's good, then I'm going to use it. I'm not going to recreate wheels. And that's the assignment for here. Now, next week, we'll take it one last step further and we'll take a look at, um, well, we'll look at Hangouts. It's, we can put a Hangouts in here. It's easy. I'll show you how to do it. And then uh, we'll look at YouTube playlists, that sort of thing, just organizationally. Uh, we're not going to be creating a YouTube channel. We're not going to be doing that. Uh, it's easy enough to do, but we're not going to do that. And then we're going to do sites, and we're going to make this show you how to connect the sites to your amazing Google Classroom that you're doing. And then what we're going to do after all that in our next module, after we get done, we're going to take a little break, give you an easy one. Um, we're going to basically do a either we're going to create a digital native versus digital immigrants and you can use um, the Zimber twins or the make beliefs comics and then we will jump down here into using our virtual classroom and how we can connect things to it because that's where it starts to get really interesting with the Google Classroom. As always, if you have questions, comments, concerns, uh, especially if you have um, a Google Classroom inside a school district, we need to chat because the only way I can see it is for you to connect up with me in a virtual space and we can then you show me what you've done. Do you have to do it next week? No, no. You're as a part of this class, you're going to have to at some point in time, either at the end of the class or anytime you so choose to let me know that you'd like to, me to see what you have been creating in your Google Classroom. And then I hope, especially when we get into the area where we start talking about all the things that are out there that you can now connect to your Google Classroom, that you'd be willing to look at putting one of those into your Google Classroom. Okay, that's everything for tonight. I see you next uh, Thursday.